called me, hey, you want him to hit your wall? I'm like, what, who? And I Google him and I'm like, fuck, are you kidding me? And his work has evolved a lot now and it's actually gotten more incredible, like more detailed. We're in Melrose and Fairfax, almost in the corner across the street from probably one of the most influential high schools. For them to see this when they're coming out of school, if they notice, I think it's, I mean, they, even if they don't notice, they're just exposed to it, you know? Fairfax is an art magnet, so every student in the magnet program has art classes, or even if you're not in the magnet program, you can sign up for art classes every year if you want. But I've been taking art for the last three years here, and I've been taking drawing, painting, AP Studio art. I like it, I want to say messy. I like the drips and everything. I like just writing on top of the writing, but I don't know. It has this aspect of muralism, but also graffiti at the same time. If you look at all the clothing and stuff, it's really abstract. It just has a lot of like expression just booming out of it, just in different forms and different parts. Then it becomes like a figure when you tosses those faces on. Me and my friend right here come out and we see we see Hush working on this stuff. It's like, oh my god, we're actually like we didn't expect this. We're like, who, who is that? It's just like walk up to him, met him. He's a really cool guy, you know? It's really chill, really chill. I'm just stoked because I I think it's gonna be great, you know, for for the kids to check out some other shit that they normally would see only in London. He's from um, the merry old land of London, and he uses lots of slang that I sometimes I don't understand. And we're both really bad at remembering names, so there's obviously that cultural barrier there. But we still connect and can make each other laugh and stuff. And it's been it's been quite a quite a wild ride. But for the faces on the on the wall here, because he wanted to get them the same size, so he just blew up the faces just to make a crude stencil just to get the proportions right. So that was the first thing we did and then we taped them together. And then it's hard putting those up because we had a like crummy ladder. But then I said stepped in and drove the cherry picker. So that works. I mean doing this type of work, you know, I mean it's just it's it's a trip. There's nothing better standing in the sun, you know, on Melrose doing a big painting be interesting people and a lot of that is kind of it's almost my remit in a way is the people I meet the experiences that you fall in it's just one of those things that you can't beat what's uh, what's the idea behind this piece it's just put a graffiti in tag and in, in it's like in a different context you know oh, okay. how it's it's always seemed to be like say uh, vandalism or destructive or, or, or kind of looked upon as being bad. Yeah. So I'm just putting it in a different, you know, with it being used in this so, so context. You're, doing like a, you're, you're including a lot of this tagging? Yeah, and cool. letter style, and it, it kind of portrays it in a different way, you know. I remember doing like a dub when I was, say, uh, 13. You know, I don't know when that would be, like, 13? It was in the 80s. Same as probably everyone else in the UK when they saw the graffiti books, subway art come out, all of those things. Kids were looking for something, like, wanted to express themselves, and that was the perfect medium. I even used to do raves and club nights, uh, just so that I could do the flyers, and I would use graffiti writing and different hand styles on that as a way of just pushing it forward constantly. Oh yeah, it was a, it was a whole, um, you know, those times it was just like a, that's what I try and reference in work all the time, is just a kind of cross-culture influence, whether it's East, West, America, England, Japan, Europe. It's kind of we adopt each other's cultures, and it ends up mixed up into this like, interesting mix, whether it's through art, music, style, design. You know, 
the world's so small now that everybody adopts each other's cultures and you come up with this like crazy mix. I'm going to spend the next three days in the gallery. I'm going to do an installation. This is the second day in here, and we've been painting here. Managed to do quite a bit, surprisingly. But things have come together fast, and uh, it's feeling right. It's just trying to get this big piece done, just to represent the street piece I did on Melrose the other day. And I always liked the kind of grime of the city, and it's always been an inspiration. I've always been kind of excited and seen a, a rusty door or some type of decay. But all of that, I could never approach a clean canvas and start working. It, it's got to go through that process. You know, you get your accidents. You can't recreate that type of work. You know, I rip cans across my work all the time. And it just, you know, you might rip a piece off and show a piece of bare wall underneath it. It just looks, there's something beautiful about it. I like making works out of almost a, a mess or, or chaos, you know, so it's, it, it doesn't seem to make sense, but as soon as I add a face, it makes a piece figurative. You throw a white line around, just almost framing the piece, and then it turns in, you know, you're giving somebody a clue to what that is, but at the same time, you cover the faces, it's almost pure abstraction. Last, last little touch, and, uh, well, last touch till I fall asleep tonight and make things up in my head and then come down tomorrow. <laughs> While I've worked uh, commercially at points in my life, I've always like kept it completely hush, you know? So it was kind of, it rose out of that. And not just that, you know, but I, I kept it quiet from friends, family, everything for years, because it's almost like a personal thing. So it was just hush, like this anonymous character and then, uh, even friends talk, talked about it, and then I'd be like, years later, oh yeah, yeah, that's, that's me. And they're like, oh shit, yeah, I've heard about that. <laughs> Hush is the character, Hush is the person who paints, but um, I don't really see myself as being that important, like, compared to the, to the work, even though <laughs> it's probably not separated making art is life and consumes every minute of every day. It's funny with openings, I always kind of feel like, right, I don't want to be there. And then, like, pre-show nerves, and then, I like interacting with people. That's kind of a big thing with me, though, is, you know, when I'm on the street, different town, different city, different country, it's like you meet really interesting people. That's kind of part of the buzz for me. You know, I actually wasn't sure what he'd think about having bands play and if he'd think we were too obnoxious or something like that. So I, I thought it was a really good match, a good mix. So, And he was very sweet and took photos with us and he made us feel at home and like we fit in here. I thought it was just a really great vibe tonight. Um, 
A lot of just really awesome open people. It wasn't snooty, arty, or anything like that. <laughs> we have had a correspondence over emails and stuff like that, and uh, I've always been really receptive to his work. And you know, it's good to see him the other day painting his piece uh, down the street. It's just good to see like just different people coming from different parts of the world to come here and add to the existing pieces that, that are here, just to add to the archive of, of what's going on, especially when you see some stuff that you really like. And I wish him all the best, and I know that you know his career is going to go very far and long and, and continue to bless us with, with more great work throughout the years. Just with the nice weather and all the interesting people walking past, it's been a, it's been a good week. It's always good to watch, watch him work, because I think that's, he absolutely loves doing it. So it's, it's nice when he gets to, to do big walls like that, because that's, that's what he really loves to do. He always has fears, what people are going to think, what people are going to say, but usually the minute he walks through the door and there's like some people smiling, he's fine. When people see something, they emulate it, and they don't really take it to the next level. And he real, I, I can see in his work that he really wanted to make it his own. He doesn't do the same lettering that everyone does. He doesn't do the same stenciling that everyone does. He creates his own layers in his own time. There's like a context of history there. It's his own history that he's creating and building upon. I, and I, it just sucked me in. So it's, if people are really on it, I like to give people those clues. Like, you know, if, if they really want to look into the work and kind of decipher it, they can see past and present marks. It's also, it's almost like referencing, you know, like a Hall of Fame or, or uh, tagged up doors from years back where you, you see a, a, a tag that was there three years ago, you know, and it's still in existence, even though new work's on top of it. I don't know, I like to throw those timelines in because I, I, I've progressed my work quite fast. Uh, I mean, I've got like the next three years of paintings in my head, but it's almost I've got to tell this story. I don't want to jump from here to what, I, what I've got in my head now because it, it mightn't make sense. So it's almost I've got to educate the viewer and I've got to take them through this story and timeline. Which is, it's a little game with yourself as well, you know? I love it and hate it. And I finished like five hours ago and I've done another two walls since. So uh, we'll leave it as that. Last little heart. A heart's a nice one to end on. Yeah.